SMT Nation, we are back. Nation, this is a really important video. This is something that needs to be discussed. If we are going to have the greatest potential out of the 3 gigahertz frequencies and bands, by that I'm talking about C-band, which every carrier has, DOD, which every carrier has, and then the CBRS piece, which we've talked about, and it's problematic and it's not reaching its full potential. And then we've got the 3.1 gigahertz coming down the pipeline. This all needs to be fixed, and it can be fixed. AT&T even has a proposal, and we're going to evaluate it today in this video. And I've gone ahead and linked the article from Monica Alvin Fierce Network. This was posted actually last year, around this time, right? No coincidence, right? Kind of highlighting the issues with CBRS and limitations there. Anyways, we're going to talk about all of it in today's video. Hear me out. Listen to these pieces. Let me know what you think about them. Comment in the comment section. If you think things are, are good ideas or bad ideas, or it could work. All right, so let's discuss it. All right, so the first thing we got to discuss, right? The three gigahertz frequencies are an absolute mess. This is really, really important mid-band people. We had a problem with C-band. That's 3,700 to 3,900, right? We had a problem with that. FAA, planes, altimeters, that whole shebang. All right, anyways, we've basically moved beyond it. Right below that is a set of frequencies, I guess we'll call them, CBRS, right? Which is unlicensed spectrum. C-band is licensed, which means it gets full power to be broadcasted. So it's it has great reach and indoor propagation. It, it can, I mean, the carriers love that stuff. They pay billions of dollars for that stuff. So below the C-band is CBRS. And that's like 3550. And they're in 10 megahertz sub blocks and it's all unlicensed right they did license pals private access licenses sort of the rules leave it to kind of be low power so it's basically a low powered version of c-band not ideal it does get companies involved fixed wireless access providers right um you know even licenses for companies like verizon and you know they've built it out pretty good but it doesn't get full power because of the neighboring interference issues, right? From, um, you know, just outside the band. So it has its place. Uh, it's been cool, but it, it's been underutilized and it hasn't reached its potential, right? So at t has a proposal. Let's move, let's change CBRS from 3550 down to 3.1. Let's give them the lower part of the range. We'll keep it unlicensed. We'll allow all these people to use it. No problem. Let's clear up the rest of the entire frequency. So above the CBRS, right? So it would go from like, I think they have what? Like 150 megahertz, right? Of spectrum for CBRS. So you'd basically go from what? 3.1 to 3.25 or something, whatever. And the rest of it will all be high powered, good propagation, indoor performance, lots of reach, high powered three gigahertz power, right? High power frequencies. It would make C-band better. It would make the DoD at AT&T, the 3450 better. It would make it all contiguous, which improves spectral efficiency, right? So like, think about it like this. You could eat like one piece of food every hour, right? I'm trying to do an analogy here. Every hour, a small piece of food. Or you can just eat a meal one time <laughs> and have like, you know, it'd be more efficient to eat that way. You wouldn't have to sit down and eat in all these little separate times. You would just eat once, right? And you'd be more productive because you've already eaten. You don't have to stop every 10 minutes to eat. I don't know. I'm trying to create an analogy, but basically we're going to keep all these parts of the three gigahertz full powered and not splitting up the channels, losing the efficiency. Cause that's literally what CBRS is doing right now. It's low powered, it's unlicensed and it cuts all the high powered stuff right through the middle, impacting the spectral efficiency reducing throughput, reducing bandwidth efficiency, this would fix a lot of that problem. So AT&T's got this proposal to move CBRS down to the bottom of the range and then put everything above it, high powered, and then auction it and make more money, right? For for the FCC and, you know, citizens, you know? Um, so I love the proposal. I think it's fantastic. You still provide the 150 to 200 megahertz of CBRS down in the lower part of the band, 
and then the rest of it gets to be high power and contiguous and non-disrupted and it's all full power right that's going to be a great way to go i think that's the answer i think the fcc has to address this i don't know what type of technical issues have to happen in terms of policy but there definitely can be a way that could fix this conundrum still giving fixed uh you know the fixed wireless access providers the unlicensed opportunities for folks down in the lower part of the band but the rest of it goes great for commercial and these companies will pay billions of dollars for it right and then we get better more capacitive networks on at&t verizon and t-mobile and then you got to think about that right all of a sudden that cbrs stuff gets really really valuable well where cbrs currently sits at 3.5 right all that's going to change but man this would be huge guys this would be industry changing it would i i don't even know is there a precedent for this a reband within three gigahertz has I don't know, maybe there's something that happened back in the day like with a with a reband or a, a realignment maybe you guys can comment but man this would be huge and this would get at&t involved they previously have been very negative on cbrs verizon kind of made it work by densification small cells and, and macro cells but trust me uh, between them and Dish and even T-Mobile and AT, they would all want in more with those frequencies if they had more full power type of capabilities. This would be huge, guys, huge. Just think about the massive MIMO potential you could do because you get the higher power, right? So many advanced 5G features can be enabled with this change. Think about it for, for home internet. Think about it for mobile connectivity. We would actually be more like the international networks where they have giant chunks of mid-band in the 3 gigahertz range. We would be doing the right thing. And the FCC could wipe the pie off their face. And how they ruin 3 gigahertz. What do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section below. You all voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.